So in this video, we're going to be going over the process of how to actually create a dashboard literally from the idea to whiteboarding to ideas to the mockup. And then at the final part, this might be in a part two of this video, we're going to actually make a live Tableau dashboard. On YouTube, I've seen tons of tutorials on how to do projects with dashboarding tools such as Tableau and Power BI. But the problem with those is if you copy those YouTube tutorials, it's going to be very hard to actually land a job because you won't stand out from the crowd. So what I recommend all of you to do today is go through this process with me, find your own data sets and try to do this with me and make your own unique projects. This will help you stand out from the crowd and you actually learn how to be a high value data analyst by planning out the dashboard. Look, the days are gone where you can just pull up Tableau, Power BI and just start making the dashboard. That's not how this works. You need to actually make a plan. You need to constantly iterate, check with stakeholders. And then at the end, after weeks, if not months, you have a finalized dashboard design that works. If you're new here, my name's Rohan and on this channel, we cover all things data related. I highly recommend checking the link in the bio and joining the Discord community where we have over 2000 people all interested in data analytics and some people already in the field. These type of videos normally don't do well in the YouTube algorithm. So I'd really appreciate it if you like and subscribe because I love to make actual technical videos for you to make you all high value data analysts. So the tools in this video we're gonna be using are Kaggle to find the data set we're going to be using Miro to actually whiteboard and brainstorm. And we're going to be using mockup.ai to actually make the mockup of our dashboard. I am not sponsored. This video is not sponsored by any of those tools. Those are just my personal preferences. Uh, you are welcome to use whatever you like. So when you're first figuring out how to create a dashboard, you need to understand the requirements. Who is your audience and what do they want? What is their end goal? So in this process, you need to figure out what your KPIs are. What key metrics do your stakeholders want? And this could be stuff like revenue. I worked at an ad tech company, so maybe this, this stuff like impressions or maybe CPM, cost per mille. Um, after you figure out what KPIs you want, you need to figure out where are you going to get this data from? What data sources are you going to use? And you need to actually document where this data actually resides, whether it's in a database, data warehouse, or whether you have to get it externally through an API, a third party data source. And lastly, when you identify the data source, you figure out what KPIs you want to use. You actually want to validate these requirements. You want to make sure this is exactly what the stakeholder wants, because the last thing you want to do is create a great looking dashboard, but you don't solve your stakeholders problem, your customers problem. So make sure you actually validate and iterate constantly throughout this process. After you are able to validate it, you want to actually collect data. Um, in our case, we are going to use Kaggle. I already self-selected my data and I'm going to use pizza restaurant sales. And we're going to be using this pizza restaurant sales and we're going to be making a dashboard for the exec team, the leadership, and they can actually monitor how their restaurant's doing, what improvements they need to make. So I recommend you go on Kaggle, Google data sets, or whichever tool you're comfortable with, and finding a data set that you're actually interested in. Don't just choose something that's cool. Figure out what your dream job is, what your dream industry is, and choose a data set that is in that industry and that actually aligns with what you want to do. This will help you stand out so much in the interview process, especially if you have projects that actually align with that business. So I already have my sample of data. Um, it's Kaggle, so I'm gonna assume the data quality is already good, but I highly recommend just downloading the data set checking out the data, make sure it actually aligns with the projects you're actually solving. So the next part is actually figuring out the plan layout and what visualizations are you gonna use? What problems are you going to be solving? And personally for me, I like to use paper and pencil. Um, it just sticks better with me. But for the purposes of this video, we are actually gonna be using a Miro board. Uh, and in dashboarding, the name of the game is all hierarchy and telling a story. It's not just putting a bunch of visuals together and saying you know how to use the tool because anyone can learn the tool. Anyone can learn the tool in one week. If you put your head down, you can learn Tableau and Power BI, but people aren't hiring people that know how to use the tool. They're hiring people who know how to use the tool effectively, and actually tell a story. I've mentioned this before in a ton of my videos. It's not about being the best programmer in the room. It helps, but being an effective data analyst is more about being able to use these tools to tell and communicate an effective story and provide insights to your stakeholders or customers. So for this video, we are gonna be making a general dashboard general dashboard for the executive team we'll do performance dashboard and the goal of this is for them to have a snapshot of their business and figure out what areas are they lacking in what areas can they improve on so let's go ahead and figure out some visuals we are going to use so as a business owner you really need to step into their shoes you need to figure out what are the things they want to know. And on top of mind for this business, they may want to know 
sales and traffic at restaurant. So what could a visual be for sales and traffic at this restaurant? Maybe you can say a line chart for daily and hourly sales. And maybe the KPIs we want are total sales revenue, average order value, and then we want this to identify patterns in sales and customer traffic. So the restaurant owner can then identify when the restaurant's busiest and what the average spend per order is at what time. So maybe they can do promotional activities. When the restaurant isn't busy, maybe they can have a happy hour, everything's half off to drive more traffic and increase the average spend per order. So that's kind of the gist as to what we want this visual for. So let's go ahead and figure out another business problem. So this business problem is gonna be called peak period analysis. And the reason we wanna do this is we wanna pinpoint specific times when the demand is highest, allowing for optimized staffing and inventory management. So we're gonna go ahead and write that down. So the why here is to pinpoint specific times when demand is highest to optimize staffing and inventory management spelled inventory wrong let's correct that and some of the visuals we're going to use for this let's say a heat map maybe showing sales volume by day of the week and hour of the day and the kpis number of pizzas made during peak periods cool so this is a visual you can do for peak period analysis to help optimize the staffing and inventory. Inventory management is a huge problem in these retail restaurants, by the way. And by consulting for one of the biggest pain points we solve are inventory management. So I really recommend um, trying to figure and problem solve that because for e-commerce, for retail, that is the biggest problem for a lot of these places other than driving traffic. So um, the next thing we wanna do is product performance. And this is for identifying the most and least popular items and can inform menu adjustments and promotional strategies. And the visuals for this is we want a bar chart or pie chart showing sales volume and revenue by pizza size and type, KPIs, best and worst selling pizzas, and revenue contribution by pizza type. So let's go ahead and think about why we'd want this. At a lot of these restaurants and e-commerce stores, they follow something called the Pareto principle, where 20% of their product offering or service offering, or even customers are contributing to 80% of their revenue. So if you have something that's just not getting sold, but you're spending time making it, but you're just throwing it away at the end of the day, you wanna discontinue that product. So that's why it's an important metric for our executive team. So the next analysis I want on here is order value analysis. So some visuals we want are histograms and box plots of order values. Some KPIs, we want average order value and distribution of order values. And then our why is we want to understand the spread of order values to help in promotional upselling strategies and set price levels to increase average order value. Sorry if this is a bit small. Actually, let me put this down here. Um, and also comment down below if you want a link to this mirror board. I'm more than happy to share it with all of you. So let's go ahead and think through this. For any retail store, when a customer comes in and they buy something, it's called an order, right? But at restaurants such as, or stores such as Costco, they have this thing called a $5 rotisserie chicken and they actually lose money on it. And you might be wondering, why do they sell a product they are losing money on? This is called a loss leader and in marketing, it's used to incentivize someone to actually go to that restaurant as a promotional strategy or go to Costco 
but who is going to go to Costco and buy just that rotisserie chicken? Very few people, right? So that's when the order value comes in, the total order value. If you're going into Costco, you're bombarded by free samples, you're probably gonna buy your groceries there. You're probably gonna buy a bunch of different things that they're making profit on. And the profit actually makes up for the loss they're doing on their loss leader called the rotisserie chicken. So understanding how your cust average customer's order value is, is extremely important for optimizing your promotional strategies, upselling, and so much more. Okay, I'm gonna include one more bonus one, because why not? And this one's gonna be table and seating utilization. So the visuals here are gonna be a scatter plot or bar chart, comparing number of orders to available seating over time. KPIs are gonna be average table occupancy rate, average number of orders per table. And now let's talk about why we want this. We want to assess how well the restaurant utilizes its seating capacity, which exec team can use to improve table turnover rates. So at restaurants, sometimes if there's too much demand, they might have to turn away customers. So we wanna make sure the reservation system's working probably in the table seating. And these are just five business problems we could potentially solve and include on their dashboard. We don't need to do all of these, but we just want to brainstorm. And the way we actually figure this out is just thinking about a restaurant's problem, talking to the people in the field who your customer or client is or the restaurant owner, or just doing research on your own. For me, I just did research on my own and I'm predicting what they'd want. But in the real world, if I was working for this pizza place, I would be talking to the exec team on maybe a, a bi-weekly cadence, figuring out their pain points and how, how I, as a data analyst, can come in and help them. Okay, so we kind of made some drafts of what visuals we want to use. The next step is actually plan out the layout and create the wireframes. Um, and we're going to build this mockup right now. We're going to move to a tool called mockup.ai. Again, I'm not sponsored by them by any means. You can use whatever you want. I don't really care but I think they have some pretty cool templates. I don't really know what the AI feature is in here, like why they have the .ai domain name other than maybe the chatbot here, but pretty good tool, other even if they don't really have an AI feature that I see at least. Um, and we're gonna be using this template. It doesn't really matter. Pick a template that you think makes sense. We have Pizza Insights. I'm gonna be changing this up a lot anyways. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start removing the stuff I don't need. Don't need webinar name, don't need webinar host. We don't need these buttons here. Let's figure out how to do this. Navigation button's off. Let's get rid of this. Let's move this over here. Actually, I want that at the top. I'm gonna to put that over here. I'm gonna move our KPIs up here. I like how these KPIs are here. But other than that, I think we're going to probably remove this other stuff. Let's go ahead and remove this, remove this, remove this, remove this. And we're going to call this Plato's Pizza Performance Insights Dashboard. And we're gonna choose our KPIs now. KPIs are stand for key performance indicators and we want these to be the first numbers that our stakeholder looks at when they look at our dashboard. So what do you think is the most important KPI here? In my opinion, I think it's total sales revenue. Okay, so we have our total sales revenue. Let's go ahead and make this value 12,500. I'm gonna do dollar sign, we wanna specialize. I want to specify and then we are going to do and we are going to do previous which would be 11 11 5 7 4 and then the value would be up eight percent perfect and then let's see the number of emails sent let's change this up to do average order value it's going to be aob the value here is going to be 30 bucks. Previous is going to be 28, 57 plus 5%. And we're going to do 
green. Okay, so the next one, maybe we want number of pizzas sold. Okay. Pizza sold. And then the properties, we are gonna do value of 12,000 pizzas. Nope. This would be quite clear. And the previous we will do 1090. And then this is plus 10%. Go ahead and get rid of that. Cool. And then the next one, let's do peak sales hour. And if you remember, these KPIs align perfectly with our mirror board in our brainstorming session. So let's do properties. We're gonna do 7 p.m. And the previous was actually 6 p.m. And we can't do percent chain, so we'll remove that in this instance. And then last thing, we'll do best selling pizza type. And then we'll do current, you know what, measured value. Uh, yeah. We can do, I'm just making up numbers. I'm just making up a name here. Okay, and then the previous, we don't want the percent change, but we can say Spartan Feast. Okay, yeah, excuse these uncreative names or semi-creative names. I'm also gonna add an image here because why not? Do they have a brand? Okay, let's let's use this image. Let's save it. Pizza logo. Let's go ahead and add that here. Okay, I just changed it. We have our weird pizza logo, perfect. Okay, so in our upper left quadrant, let's do the sales and traffic. Let's go back to our brainstorming. And the first thing we need to do is our sales and traffic at the restaurant. And here we say we want the line chart for daily and hourly sales. So let's go ahead and create that. Um, we need line chart. Let's go ahead and choose this style. It doesn't really matter. There we go, perfect. Um, and then we're gonna name this sales and traffic overview. We can do day of the month, that doesn't matter. Uh, let's maybe title it date. Perfect. And then the Y axis, let us do, we could do a double Y axis here, actually. Um, what do you guys think? Should we do it? Let's do a double axis. Yeah. Okay, let's do double axis. Primary axis, I think we might have to restart this. Okay, let's remove this. Let's do line chart. And we want the volume and the revenue. Okay, there we go, perfect. Um, I don't like the metric thing. Let's remove that. X axis, we want date. And then the Y axis, we want revenue. And then the secondary axis, Hmm. Can we move this to secondary axis? Let's see. Okay, but either way, let's rename this to sales, and then we're gonna rename this to number of pizzas sold. Okay, um, let's go ahead and get rid of the metrics. All right, there we go. We have our revenue here, we have our sales access here. Um, let's do our sales is make it a bit more realistic. Okay, that looks a little bit more realistic. Okay, and then secondary access needs a title. So let us name this number of pizzas sold. Okay. Um, 
Maybe this looks better. Perfect. Oh, let's get rid of the metrics. Where is that? Um, here, okay, here we go. And then we're gonna name this daily daily sales volume and revenue over time. Okay, so let's move on to our peak period analysis. I think for this one, we wanted a heat map. So let's go ahead and find a heat map here. I think they do have one. Let's check. Let us check. There we go, heat map. And let's do this in the right corner. Um, I'm just gonna use this. Honestly, I haven't used heat maps that much in my career. So this is kind of new to me too. Okay, let's do, let's name this weekly heat map of sales volume. And then let's go about properties. We have to go to the data set actually. And the uh, X axis is day of week. Um, and then these will be the time of day. When we can do like hourly blocks, nine to 12, 12 to three, three to six, six to nine, and then nine to 12. Yeah, these are probably not realistic whatsoever, but bear with me. Um, there we go. Uh, yeah, add in like the time period too, if you're actually presenting to your boss. I'm for the sake of time, this video is, for the sake of time, I'm gonna just not include the PMs, but um, yeah, assume all this data is accurate. This would be the total revenue. Um, yeah, let's pretend that's accurate. Okay, so let's do the product performance, and this is gonna be a bar chart. Let's go ahead and create one. Um, Mm, column chart or bar chart? But let's do bar chart. Can do basic. There we go. Um, so I like, I actually like time graphs, like time line charts that indicate time to be longer because like right now it really seems condensed. Um, and I, I feel like this is like a pretty big um, insight to our exact team. So we're gonna go ahead and enlarge this. We're gonna make this longer make these more clear and this is going to be our bar chart and this is going to be let's name this number sales volume by pizza type and then the x-axis let's turn this on i'm going to say number of pizzas sold and then the y-axis is going to be pizza type And then we are going to name these pizza types. Cheese. I don't know if I'm spelling these right. Keep the homie accountable. Athenian. Athenian delight. Um, let's do Spartan. Feast. Mushrooms. I don't know. Barbecue chicken. Cool. Okay, we have our sales volume by pizza type. Perfect. All right, let's include our last, which is going to be order value analysis. And this is gonna be a histogram showing the distribution of order values with different bins for ranges of order values. So let's go ahead and create this histogram. Okay, histogram loaded, perfect, perfect. Let's go ahead and enlarge this a bit. Um, let's go make this a bit smaller. I'm not an expert at dashboard design. This isn't my expertise whatsoever, but I think this looks decent, not bad. I'm gonna call this distribution of order values actually. And as I said, just gonna be a histogram showing the distribution of order values with different bins for ranges of order values. All right, uh, does this already make sense, these bins, or should we change these? Uh, let's go ahead and change these. Let's go up to, hmm, maybe 100. I feel like people would get $100 at a pizza place. You never know. Let's go try this out. Okay, so people with order value of less than 10. And then we can change the frequency. We can make this look a bit more realistic. Uh, I assume people with like above 100 won't be that much. So we'll go ahead and change this maybe 20. And then this one will be maybe 40. This one will be maybe 100. Maybe 100, 200. This is gonna be a uniform distribution. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, um, maybe this will be 252. And this one will be 200. And then the max, let's do 500 here. Maybe the pizza, this is a high-end pizza place. This looks pretty accurate, honestly. This looks pretty accurate. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. 
And let's go ahead and add in the x-axis and y-axis. Um, the x-axis is going to be order of value bins. The y-axis, let's go ahead and add this in, is going to be number of orders. Perfect. Um, and then we have a filter up here for the dates we want to see. So we just finished the build mockup part and we would at this point share it with our stakeholders. If you get one thing out of this video, never ever start building a dashboard directly in the tool because one, you're wasting resources. It costs money to run the SQL queries to pull the data. Two, you're wasting your time because it takes a lot more time to build a functioning dashboard, debugging it, building it. And if you present it and they don't like it, it doesn't solve a business need. You wasted weeks of time. You wasted a ton of money. It just doesn't make sense. You saw how long this took me. I don't know how long this recording is at, maybe 20, 30 minutes. I built this dashboard. I built the brainstorming in literally 20, 30 minutes. And I would go up to my customer and ask them to give me feedback on this. So the one lesson you need to learn is iterate, iterate, iterate. Do not rush it. Do not just jump into it. Always have a draft. You can whiteboard it. You can use Miro. You can use a tool like mockup.ai. It doesn't matter. Um, but always make sure you are iterating and going step by step. Um, but anyways, if you like this video, if you found it helpful at all, please leave a like, comment down below what you'd want to see next, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.